I'm sure you guys have already seen this screenshot of two women coming out and saying that Sean Shim will actually sexually harass them. Obviously, if we were to go with the kickback and hashtag MeToo mantra of listen and believe, we would have to assume that Sean Shimmel was wrong in this situation. One person says that Sean Shimmel put his hand under their skirt at Anime Midwest at 2011, and another girl said that he took a pen and put it back into their tank top between their boobs, and when he did it, he pulled down their top seemingly purposely to get a cheap look. So like I said, if we were to listen and believe, Sean Shim was automatically wrong, right? But the real reason why I'm making this video is a lot of people who have problems with Vic Mignogna will claim that he's more likely to be guilty of sexual assault because he's been rude to convention staff. I always thought that argument was pretty interesting. I even interviewed a Kick Vic supporter on my channel and they said the same thing. By the way, she was pretty reasonable, but she did make that point during our little interview. So I would love to reference this video about this guy meeting Sean Schimmel in 2018, way before all this Vic stuff happened, where Sean was being not only rude to convention staff, but rude to fans two days in a row. How are you doing it? How are you what is going on? Where is she? Where, where are the people? There's a whole, I'm standing there and nobody's there. I've got a giant line I'm trying to get through. And I'm getting real frustrated with this system. And that was my first experience seeing Sean up close. And you know, I don't know what he was going through for the day, but uh, when I saw that he wasn't joking, it kind of took the joy out of it. The staff members were visibly frustrated and I heard some off comments from them that this has kind of been a continuing thing with him. Anyway, they walked us over to his booth. I had to wait a few more minutes, but eventually it was my turn. I just told him I was a huge fan like everybody else to make sure he had no special memories of me. I asked him if I could take a picture, I shook his hand and that was the end of it. I did ask if I could have my friend film us while we got a picture together. He said he doesn't really like being filmed, but you know, it's kind of whatever. Thank you. And I do have a media pass, so I do film a lot of the con. Now bear in mind, I just put this whole thing as Sean was probably just having a bad day. I don't know if it was just a con or if he had a bad run-in experience with a fan. I just don't know. But I certainly don't hold this against him. After all, I just met Goku. So I went to Walgreens or Target uh, after the con, and I printed out an 8x10 picture of the two of us that I had taken on my phone. I was going to go back tomorrow. He was going to be in a better mood. I would get a personalized autograph from him. Everything would be great. But even then, the next day, 24 hours later, he was still in a bad mood. I asked him again if I could film him just signing the picture for me. He gave me kind of like, eh, you know, I don't really like that kind of thing, but didn't really give me an explicit no. So I asked him if he would make the picture out to my friend Holden. Does this mean out to you or just sign? Uh, yeah, to, uh, to my friend Holden. He kind of looks over at me like, um, what? And then he signs it to my friend in quotes, Holden, just to clarify that we are not actually friends. I really wasn't sure how to react to this whole thing. After years and years and years of going to cons and meeting celebrities and taking pictures with them, not buying anything and just shaking their hand to meet them, I had never really had an experience like this before. And throughout the con the rest of that day and even the next day, I would watch as Sean would kind of interact with people in this really uncomfortable way. And I couldn't help but thinking to myself, had it been any other person, celebrity or otherwise, I would have thought that he was just being a jackass. And this thought just really bothered me. This is in part why I never talked about meeting him like I did with Jason Douglas, who is the voice of Beerus. And even still, after three days of seeing the same thing, I still gave him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he had something going on in his life or something. After the fact, and I had been thinking about this for several months, I started to see some stories online of other people who had run-ins with him and they were very, very similar. So yeah, not only if we were to go by the Kickvik ideology of listen and believe, Sean is wrong by default, but him being rude to convention staff and fans in the past also, according to Kickvik, makes him more likely to be guilty of sexual assault, right? I'm just trying to use their ideologies back at them, right? If you believe something and I disagree with you, that's fine, but make sure you keep your beliefs consistent and don't change them based on who you favor and who you don't. That's pretty much it, man. In terms of an incrimination standpoint, I still want to see evidence no matter who it is. Sean Schimmel is not my favorite person nowadays, but still, we can't just incriminate someone without any evidence. Burden of proof, presumption of innocence, innocent until proven guilty. All of that still exists, and I believe in all that very deeply. Let me know what you guys think about this situation in the comments. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more. See ya.